Good. So that was uh, squeezing uh, steels. This is a very, very, I think, uh, misunderstood concept. A lot of people think a steel, just given the, the, the meaning of the term, is when you have a bad hand and you make a bet in order to quote unquote steal the pot. It's actually not meant at all. Um, you're going to use, you're going to hear that term used in exactly that context and in that, in that sense it will mean that. But what we mean here when we talk about steals is when, uh, whether, you know, whether you're playing a six max or a ten or let's say seven or a full ring, a seven player game or a full ring game, um, it doesn't matter. What a steal is, is when it's folded all the way around to the late positions and somebody in the cutoff the button or even the small blind then makes an open raise that's a steal so you can make a steal with 7-2 offsuit or you can make a steal bet with uh, a pair of aces completely irrespective of, of your holding a steal is defined by um, preflop action and again it's when it's folded around to the late positions and they make an open raise all right, and as a general rule, what I've got here is uh, you want to raise it up as an open raiser in late position to approximately 3.5 big blinds from the cutoff, three big blinds from the button, and again, given the post-flop positional disadvantage as a small blind, again, 3.5 to 4.5 big blind. You can, of course, vary that up. Uh, you guys, as we'll get into the, you know, the, the math here, behind it all shortly um, you can make your own decisions but again I would I can really only stress the importance of being consistent in your bet sizing based on position and based on the pre-flop action okay that would also return to the post-flop action um, which we'll look at here in the future um, what we have here is uh, 10a re-steals that is yeah, again ste stealing is an uh, even bigger topic than uh, <laughs> yeah, squeezing and uh, yeah, all the different two, three, and four bets. Resteals, as such, are when you three bet in either the small blind or the big blind to a steel raise from the cutoff of the button. And again, we'll look at this um, steel calculator here briefly, but that has been covered uh, in quite great detail in the poker math videos. The um, blind battles. Um, in order to really understand how that how that looks and how that goes down, you need to see the uh, heads up and yeah, Texas Hold'em coaching videos especially. Um, but as such, yeah, blind battles have a different dynamic than um, cutoff or button versus one of the blind scenarios. Um, yeah, steals from the cutoff or the button with um, two or three callers, uh, either from the button or and or the both of the blinds. Um, it's just, there's, yeah, it's a whole world in and of itself that needs to be actually covered in very, very, very great detail um, in separate videos. But just to give you an idea um, and let you know what this is, the stealing, I mean, uh, people who, who open raise from later positions are going to have a much wider range than when they open from early positions, maybe uh, just open raising. Okay, so you need to give, in general, a lot more respect to early position raisers a lot more respect to open three three betters or four betters than you do to general steals, barring very low steal percentage numbers. Uh, again, guys, uh, see all the previous videos that build upon this. And as we're here, we'll just quickly look at the steal calculator to give you an idea uh, for those of you who may not have seen the series on poker math. Okay, so this is our steal calculator, essentially this whole bit here. And what we've got is fold to a steal in the big blind, fold to a steal in the small blind, and these are the percentages that you're going to see when you have um, poker tracking software such as Holder Manager. So, uh, as you can input this, all the different light yellow fields as always, you can input yourself. Um, if you're just playing one table, this is extremely useful. Um, if you're multi-tabling, just give you an idea, you can play with this after the fact, especially when analyzing your hands in these positions. Let's say for example purposes, the big blind is folding three times in four to a steal. So that means whenever this guy is posted a big blind and it's folding around to a late position and either the cutoff or the button raises, he's going to fold three times in four. 
the small blind is in folding 90% of the time. Given these fold to your steel move uh, percentages, you can bet three big blinds, you can raise it to three big blinds, and fold to every single raise that these guys might make over time and still be making 0.04 big blinds in the long run. Of course, you'll be also stealing with premium hands from time to time, so this number will be much higher. Um, just be sure that if these guys do raise, uh, i.e. re-steal, that uh, you're able to let go of your hands uh, from time to time. Okay, actually quite often. Uh, let's take another example. Let's say this guy's only folding 80% and this guy's only folding 7%. Now, when you're raising two, three big blinds as a steal, you're no longer making money in the long run just by betting and folding. All right, so in these cases, you can even drop it down to 2.5. Uh, it's even a bit too low. And even two big blinds, um, you're still losing a little bit of money. The problem is with only min raising here, which is what a two big blind raise is, yeah, these guys are getting way too good odds. They can basically call almost any two <laughs> and potentially push you off the hand after the fact. Um, good. So that's why I'm always saying, you know, round three on the button, uh, 3.5 on the cutoff like this, irrespective of the, the full percentages. Um, if these guys are looking like this, um, which is almost never the case, yeah, you can you can drop that down, um, yeah, to different big blind sizes and yeah, play with that as you like. Good. Um, let's take you know very good you know tag is going to look something like this. Let's get us back in the green, seventy five and eighty five I think. Wasn't it? Guys to your left, you're on the you're on the button, be you here, and you steal to three big blinds. Okay. It's folded around to you. You make a raise, an open raise to three big blinds. The villain in the small blind, right, could three bet, right, or not. In this case we just have or we just have his uh, small bet posted here. And our scenario is as follows. You have ace king on the button, you raise it up to three, and the villain or the opponent in the big blind three bet you. Okay, so he re-raises you from the big blind, which is very lucrative uh, given certain <laughs> certain circumstances. Uh, he raises it up three times your initial raise, uh, which is pretty much textbook. This calculator then breaks down how that looks. Okay, so if you're just going to call him, you have an effective stack of 97 big blinds. Uh, you're playing a big stack strategy. Uh, if you're just going to call him cold, right? You need 32% equity to do so. In this case, if you were to push all in, right, if you were to call that nine all in, um, you need 32% equity to break even in the long run. That's not the case when you're uh, playing a big stack strategy. So what you need here is 32% uh, probability of hitting a very strong flop or playable flop or a flop that you're um, able to continue with, maybe outplay your opponent, whatever. Uh, you need this percentage probability of hitting that flop to do so. With the rake, you need a bit more, of course, at 34%. So that's if you're to call him, call his 3-bet cold. Okay. If you don't call the 3-bet cold, let's say you then 4-bet. You come over the top. Now, textbook would dictate that you then raise 2.5 to 3.5 times his raise. All right, so pumping it up to around 27. Um, the scenario that we have here is a 4-bet push. So that would be, of course, a bit, maybe a bit much, maybe not. Um, given, yeah, deep stacks, uh, big stacks, but this is, anyways, the scenario that we have set up. That means you push over the top all in as a four bet, and your villain in the big blind, if he's to call, needs 45% equity, 46 with the rake, to break even in the long run. All right. You yourself, when you push and get called by the big blind, are going to need 48% or 49% with the rake, which is, yeah, pretty, uh, yeah, pretty high. All right. So if you have ace king and he's playing any pair, you've got about 45%, and you're going to be losing, you know, the difference in the long run. Anyways, that's how it's work. That's how this works out. Um, you can play with this uh, in different ways. And again, this was covered in great detail in the. Yeah, poker math videos, but this is something that's at your disposal and something you should definitely utilize when you're analyzing your hands.
Initiative, that second last point here, pre-flop, this is always with the last better or the last raiser pre-flop. And what we have here is a little tip. Um, pre-flop pushes nullify positional disadvantages in post-flop play, as well as post-flop differences in skill, i.e. edge. What does that mean? Initiative is, um, for those of you who play chess or... Basically, any any kind of any kind of game that's dictated by logic, initiative just means that you have um, the right of the first move. Let's say you're 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 on the move, so to say. You have the right to initiate the next uh, direction of play. Say this is always with the preflop, so-called preflop aggressor. So the last preflop aggressor. That means maybe, for example, you raise uh, in early position, you get re-raised and you only call. The preflop aggressor is no longer you, even though you did make the initial raise. It's the one who made the last aggressive move preflop. That's important. Um, you can seize the initiative postflop by making different moves, and that we'll get into here shortly. Um, but what we have here in red is very, very important. Um, and for those of you who are going to be playing the short stack strategy, very, very, very important information is that when you do push preflop, even if you're out of position and even if your players are better than you, none of that can help your opposition in the long run when you push preflop. That means if you do feel you're at a skill disadvantage and that your hand is better than your opponent's um, equity-wise, it's good to get it all in preflop especially when out of position. That happens a lot when you're short stacked, when you're big stacked. Um, yeah, it, it also happens, but um, you know, you need to get in, again, this yeah, four and five bet scenarios more often than not. Good, that's just a, a heads up for those of you who are getting started. Whenever you get it all in, even on the floor, the positional disadvantage is then nullified by that move.